Hey everyone, this is Donnie with Anderson Ford Motorsport. This is going to be a little tech tip video in regards to Terminator X Gen 2 Fox Body Kits. I've been getting a lot of questions lately, a lot of uh, questions in regards to how to get a tune loaded and also how to update everything to where it jives and works properly when you're running a Gen 2 harness. So a couple key takeaways from this I want you to be able to understand is a couple things you need to do on the software specifically and also how to update firmware to make sure whatever tune you create for yourself will actually load into the ECU and actually allow it to function on your Terminator X. So the Terminator X Gen 2 Fox Body Kit has a couple things going for it that does not allow to make changes in regards to the 3.5 inch touchscreen that is included in all of our Gen 2 kits. Uh, most notably, it's the coolant temp sensor and the manifold air temp sensor. Those are required to be changed and a couple other things as well to, in order to get your car running. So we're just going to do a little step-by-step -step tutorial here. I'm not going to go through every little step, but I'm going to go through some of the basics because some of the visual aids I think are much better to understand versus trying to explain via over the phone or via email how to help out. So. If you are going to be installing a Terminator X Gen 2 kit for the first time on one of your Fox Body Mustangs, there's a couple things you need to do. So first off, we're going to start by going to Holly's website. You're going to want to go to the support tab in the upper right hand side here. Once you click on that, you're going to want to go to fuel injection. And since this is a Gen 2 Terminator X kit, we are going to go to Terminator X and X Max. First thing you'll notice is what pops up is the Terminator X V3. Now I can tell you this just from current experience is that all Terminator X ECUs are actually shipped out from the factory with a version 2 software and a version 2 firmware. Usually build 50 or build 70 is usually the firmware that is currently in ECUs. So we're going to actually try to make this as simple as possible for you. We're going to skip V3 and we're going to scroll down to V2 which is just a little bit further down. The software and firmware that we currently run is version and build 80. So you can see that it's in the list here. This is the software you would go ahead and download. So after you click on that, allow it to download, get it ready to rock and roll. Not only that, you're going to want to go ahead and download the V2SD card contents, which is also, as you can see here, V2 build 80 firmware. We want to make sure that these things coincide and that all functionality will work properly once it's actually downloaded. Now the reason for this is because if you are going to be running the Terminator X Gen 2 kit, there's two ways you can tune your vehicle. One is through the SD card that is included in your 3.5 inch touchscreen, or if you purchase Holly part number 558-443, that is the CAN to USB cable which can allow you to do live laptop tuning through the software. But it's not required, especially if you're going to get it started for the first time. You can actually use the handheld, but you have to actually build yourself a tune through the software and then essentially loading your SD card back into the handheld and loading it that way. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. We're going to go ahead and uh, download uh, Build 80 here for the software and download the... Okay, now that we've successfully loaded the SD card contents and the software, we're going to go ahead and open up the software. And we're just going to be using as an example a small block forward naturally aspirated tune file. When we pull that up here, we can see all the options. We're going to come back to this, but here's what you're going to want to do to start with before you even build yourself a tune. This folder is the SD card contents, the 200R962A-4. We're going to double click on this. These three files here under this folder are going to, going to be the files that you're going to want to transfer over to your SD card. So you're going to take your SD card out of the 3.5 inch touchscreen, attach it to your computer or laptop. It's going to pull up three files that look very similar to this. But you'll probably notice that this number won't match the one in the SD card. That's because this right here, you can clarify it here with the 8.0, that is in the FWU, which stands for Firmware Update. This is the version 80 firmware. So essentially, when you get your SD card loaded into your handheld, I'm sorry, into your computer, you're going to want to go ahead and highlight and delete all three of those files out of your SD card. After you do that, you're going to want to take these three files drag and drop them over to your SD card file. 
and then you'll see it starting to load. It's usually about just under like 1150 files or so. And once it loads, that means you now have that version 80 firmware into that SD card that's going to be going into your three and a half inch touchscreen. We're not going to close this down just yet. Now we're going to go visit the software because we need to build ourselves a tune because again, as I stated at the beginning, the three and a half inch touchscreen monitor cannot make certain changes in order to get everything to line up properly for your car to run. And I'm going to talk about those briefly here. So once you have your software pulled up and you're building yourself a tune for the first time, of course, you'll run through the system ICF and set up all your parameters and stuff. But the key takeaways that you're going to need to change besides those common ones is the coolant temp sensor. The coolant temp sensor is already pre-programmed from Holly as a Holly sensor. But with using the factory OEM Ford coolant temp and manifold air temp, you need to set this down to Ford modular. Simple change in the drop down. Go to both the manifold air temp, MAT, and the CTS coolant temp sensor. Switch those to Ford modular. All right. Doing it this way, that means, or switching these two options here, means that the scaling and the proper readings will be now sent to the Holly ECU for your tune. Very important. All right, after you do that, we need to go over and switch the idle air control motor because, again, even if you select it in the handheld, it's not going to actually switch it over. It's actually going to be this setting, a GNLSX, even though you selected 5 liter Ford in the handheld. So we're going to go over here, change the drop down to 5 liter Ford. And a 5 liter Ford OEM idle air control motor is a pulse width modulated and not a stepper. After you do this, you'll need to change the frequency. Now, one of the key things with the Gen 2 Terminator X system that we offer is that the power supply is actually done through the injector harness versus the ECU directly on the Holly. Now, Ford actually did it this way from the factory, so if it works with Ford, it'll work here. We're gonna go ahead and select our frequency. Usually 300 is a good way to start. And these other changes here, you'll need to just uh, adjust based on what your car likes. One thing I like to do, just from what I've seen, many Ford cars like to have their, and I'll just show you here what that means, the P term and the D term on the idle spark enable. This usually helps you get your car to idle smoothly after you get it running. And uh, these are just settings that um, we found that have worked pretty well for most vehicles. Again, every car is different, so you'll want to make those changes based on what your car likes. All these other changes in the IAC ramp down, startup position, and stuff along those lines, you'll need to adjust properly. Same with your park position and idle speed. You'll want to go in and make changes based on what your car is going to like. And usually IAC park will usually pull this down a good amount just because most uh, Ford idle air control motors don't require this much work. So, for example, we'll pull this down a little bit because with the idle air control motor being maxed out this much, it's probably going to rev up really high once you get started and stuff like that. So, again, you'll want to pull this down. You can either manually enter the numbers in here or you can take these arrows and drag them down as far as you want and just go down the board. And, again, every car is going to be a little bit different. If you uh, buy a base tune from us and stuff, we'll already have a lot of this stuff done for you. We'll have a lot of these pulled down and uh, in uh, more reasonable areas and stuff like that, just based on what we've seen, we what we've seen work and stuff like that. But if, again, you can manually change these things yourself. So again, just an example. But uh, the last thing you need to do after making that change here in regards to setting up the idle air control motor is go to your pin map at the top, go to your outputs, and you'll see the pulse width modulated is now sitting in an unassigned output. You actually need to move this to the B3 slot or output 4. Once it's there, this allows it to activate and show on the Holly and that the Holly is actually going to be controlling it. So you can go through, make yourself all the other places. Um, the, the key thing is once you make yourself a tune is uh, the car probably won't run properly until you get the fuel map really dialed in and stuff that'll actually help a lot especially with the uh, cold starts and just regular idle quality and stuff along those lines once you dial in this table here you'll notice a big change in how well your car runs but after you go through all the different parameters and stuff your timing tables your uh, fuel tables and stuff like that uh, you, get, you got your tune built set in a satisfactory way that you're ready to start as a base file uh, you're going to go up here to file Save global file as. Now remember, we got that SD card slot loaded in here, right? 
uh, I'm sorry, the SD card from the three and a half inch uh, handheld in here that we just loaded the new firmware on. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to where we're going to, where we saved it. We'll just say it's uh, on the desktop still. Otherwise it'd be, you know, currently in the, um, the, my computer section and stuff like that under the hardware. We'll just say that this is the SD card slot. So you'd have this option here and go to Holly FWO 200 save GCF GCF stands for global config file. And this is essentially your tune file. So you're going to double click on that and then you'll name this something. We'll just say test tune one and hit save. You now have your tune file saved in your global config files. Once you actually get that uh, SD card slot now loaded in back into your handheld, you'll boot up the car for the first time and you'll notice that it's going to go through its booting process. You'll see a percentage bar going across and just follow the prompts. It'll tell you to cycle the ignition and stuff along those lines. After you do that, you'll go to the global file screen, load that tune. You'll see it see its progress load up and then after that you can go to your wizards do a tps auto set and after that you should be able to hear your fuel pump prime you should be ready to start your car after you do that just follow the prompts in regards to doing a static timing check or a locked timing check and then after that you should be able to start tuning your vehicle so i hope this helped out and i hope this will get you going again the main key is having the firmware match Again, if, you, if the firmware doesn't match on the ECU versus what's on the tune, you go to try to load that tune, it's probably going to error out and not load the tune file, and your car will, you'll never get your car running or it won't run properly until you actually get that going. So these are the essential steps in order to make that happen. So, Okay, so that should really wrap things up. That should get you started. And at, at minimum, it should actually get your car started. Again, the tune file and stuff like that is going to be based on you or if you hire someone or pay for a base tune file or something along those lines. But essentially, that's where you would save that tune file into your SD card and get it going. Or, again, you can buy the part number, again, 558-443 and use that to do live laptop tuning. And that should be able to get you ready to rock and roll. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up here. I hope it helps out. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.